Hey guys, welcome back to some OCR FSMQ, Joe back once again with uh, some lessons and this is the third and final part on linear programming. So I will be talking about something called integer solutions today and I will be talking about another method uh, that the examiner could ask you this question and let's get straight into it. So uh, they could give you it in a tabular format like this but you, you want to have a big smile on your face if you do get it like this because it makes it so much easier and um, because it's pretty much laid out all of um, the inequalities for you but we'll talk about that in a second let's have a read so a company makes two types of toy A and B the machine time and the craftsman time along with the profit made on each toy are shown in the table below so along the top we've got machine time and then craftsman time and profit per robot and with um, 3 to 10, 3, 4, 12, 40, 50. So you can probably see where this is going to go. If the company wishes to maximize their profits, that word again, solve the problem stating integer values of the number of each toy that must be sold. So you must, must read the question because if it asks for that and you get decimalized answers, you've dropped a mark. But um, that, and that could potentially be the difference between getting your A or your B or even your C. Um, so uh, let's get into the question. So machine time, 3x plus, th uh, well if we let uh, x equal the number of toy, toy A's and B equal the number of toy B's. Um, so it'll be 3x plus 3y must be less than 40. And similarly it's going to be 2x plus 4y is less than 50 and 10x plus 12y equals your profit so there should really be a p in there but you know it's not really time available so you know but we'll we'll talk about that later so there you go p equals 10x plus 12y so none of those should have spooked you if you've watched the first two parts it's really picking apart the question and trying to understand what it's telling you so here's a lovely grid again and it is funnily enough in the uh in the correct scale and so here's our inequalities just plotting them now and shading out like that and uh, they are with three points that we're interested in and that is where objective functions so solutions are either if we're going a, a parallel style we want to get as far out as possible and I'm thinking it's possibly that point there might be wrong on that not sure uh, so these are the three solutions I got by solving simultaneously and uh, yeah which is going to give us the, the best value corresponding profits are 150 if you put that into the profit function so p equals uh, 10x plus 12y I think it was um, you come out with 150 quid if you put that in you end up with 133.33 quid and with that you get 156.66 quid so that's obviously the maximum that you get but think about the question again you can't make two-thirds of a toy and the the do guide you into this the examiner has by saying we want integer solutions you, we don't want you to be silly and just, um, you know do two-thirds of a toy uh, because some child's going to be very very upset if they only get two-thirds of a toy on Christmas Day so there you go so how do we deal with that then just round the numbers up down like we always do you can do that but it's a bit clumsy uh, the actual answer is x equals 12 and y equals 12 uh, x equals 2 and y equals 12 that is to say make two types of toy a and 12 types of toy b job done that's if you round up and down but look at the machine time on the solution so if you remember it was 3x plus uh, 3y must be less than 42 but if you put those numbers in uh, the 2 and the 12 that actually doesn't fit the the constraint you'll end up working for 42 hours and you'll have um, work as protestants saying oh we've been overworked and let's be systematic about this then we could have four options list them and check all of your constraints uh, it's not necessarily just two of them there could be three or four that you have to keep happy but um, let's just let's just have a set this up like this so you've got your machine time your craftsman time and your profit so if I just work around those numbers I think it was 11.66 
and 1.66. If we round up and down uh, both sides and see see what we get um, each time. So there you go. If we have x equals 1 and y equals 11, then we get 36 and 46 and 142. Uh, the 46 is less than 50, which is good, and the 36 is less than uh, 40, which is good. So, that one works. So let's, just for a laugh, let x equal 1 and y equal 12. Let's see what we get. So we get 39 there, that's okay. We get 50 there, so that's okay. So that's an overall profit of 154. Now, x equals 2 and y equals 11. Let's try that one. Try a look. We'll get 39 for there. That's good. We'll get 48 for there, so that's good as well. We'll get 152 there. And as we know from before, if it's uh, 2 and 12, we will get 42 and 52, and both of them mess up the constraints, so we don't really care about that. Now then, out of these three, which is the most profit? Well, it's obviously 154, so I advise the, the manufacturer to make uh, one type of toy A and 12 types of toy B. There you go, there, a nice big red box around it. And that is the end of the lesson. So that is integer solutions. Um, that, 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 there's probably other ways of doing it, but I was taught in this way. We would sort of play around with the numbers uh, around the... Uh, the, the point of impact. So you'd round up a little bit, round down a little bit, put them through the constraints and see which works out best. But there probably is another way to do it, an easier way uh, if you look around, but that's the way I do it. And um, yeah, I hope you guys have found it helpful. Please leave a like if you did um, and comment down in the comment section uh, if you need any help. And there's always a worksheet down in the description. And I will also put a uh, linear program and revision sheet um, up as well because I did that for my class so I might as well put it up and uh, yeah I will see you guys for hmm I think it's differentiation actually I think it's differentiation the next lesson so that'll be a fun one the start of calculus I will see you guys in a couple of days time have a nice day